Welcome everyone to I Wait Blossoms Part 2. I'm Arlie and I'm bringing you this fabulous content. I just have like a big paper in front of me saying make an intro and make an outro. Like a big bold letter. Yeah. Pass me once an intro. Just return to where we were. As you remember, we were uh, hunting a treasure, a treasure, and maybe love, I guess. I tune out her chattering and nod as we walk out to the parking lot so we can finally get the fuel. The attendant shouts one last thing, his voice fading behind the glass of the closing door. Good luck on your trip! Yep. Dot dot dot. Dessert people are weird. He mustn't get much visitors in his shop. That's why. Oh. No way. Maybe it's further up the road? I can't believe it. It's gone. I, I don't see anything. Everything's black. Is the image gone? We could have just passed it. We weren't even away that long. How can it be gone? We stare at the empty space that once housed a certain ugly green car. That music is... it means the sound. Yeah, I'm gonna put that down too. We stare at the empty space that once housed a certain ugly green car. Be their color car ugly. I look in every conceivable, conceivable direction, but there's nothing, nothing but an ocean of sand and a never-ending stretch of road. Is it Toad? Ooh, awkward zoo. Love it. No, not out there. Not this quick. Where the hell did it go? What the fuck? I'm sorry. Yeah, that is kind of weird, isn't it? Marina's hands rest against her cheek as she looks on with only mild confusion, like she's trying to solve a small mystery. Your car is missing! <sighs> That's more than a little weird. <laughs> oh my god. That's epic. Well, it's actually my big brother's car. He just lent it to me when he left for college. Yeah. He's gonna miss it now. Oh, well that makes everything better then. Sure does. Really? No. <laughs> no! Oh, yes. I let out a heavy sigh and press my fingers to my temple. Attempting to message away the stress and irritation. It was probably stolen. We'll need to call the police. You have a phone, right? No, she left it in the car. With her wallet, probably. I do, but... Oh my god. Her voice trails off a cliff. Ooh. Poor voice. Suicidal voice. What she said earlier echoes in my head. That's right, you said it was dead. And I'm guessing you left it in your car. Hey. Yeah. Well, that's just great. Don't you have one? Nope, never needed one. Yep, never needed one. Afraid no one would call you? <laughs> <laughs> just don't need anyone to call, I don't know. Not quite. So cut off from the world, Ember, she is. I shield my eyes and look up at the dry sky. Its color has shifted to a glowing orange as sunset begins to settle over the distant valley peaks. It's going to get dark pretty soon. Yeah, I'm loving the little sun sunrise. No, it's sundown effect. Whatever. It's a beautiful color. Don't worry, Amber. I would call you. <laughs> I just can't leave her. Can't just leave her. 
Even if she did have her phone, it would take forever before anyone could get out here. She'd go from, from burning up in the heat to freezing out in the cold within a few hours. Plus, if there are people that want would steal cars, there's no telling who else is out there. I can already see how, it, how all of this would go down. She would be huddled on the side of the road, road trying to keep warm. A pack of coyote will be howling all around her, closing in. Then, from down the road, the starved creep would pull up in a trashy old pickup, open his door for her, and... Yeah, what's worse, the rape or the coyotes eating her? I don't know. Oh god. Hey, where are you from? If you don't mind me asking. Oh, I'm from Carlsbad. She poses for a moment. Or at least kind of close to it. It's a little out of the way. Carlsbad? You're from California? No, silly! Carlsbad, New Mexico! Oh, uh, right. And me going there for a second. How far is that? Hmm... Maybe... Two hours from here? What? <laughs> oh my god. Wow, you didn't get very far at all, did you? Marina lowers her head in shame. I never really seem to. True, I, I'm not really one to talk. I've been on the road less than a day. Would have gotten farther if traffic on the I-40 wasn't such a pain in the butt. Or if, if I didn't pick up Marina. Hey, listen. You don't live too far away. If you want, I can probably give you a lift back home. I prepped myself for an explosion of techful energy and excitement. But there isn't one. Da -da -da -da. Instead, she continues to stare at the crown, her hands now balled up in the fist as she fidgets ever so slightly. Something wrong? She shifts her gaze from the ground and look at me looks at looks me straight in the eyes, drawing a deep, long breath. Remember the treasure we were talking about at the store? Yeah, the treasure! Yeah? I know it's a lot to ask, and you've already helped me out so much already. But do you think you could take me to the first place the treasure is? Huh? She wants to keep going? Even after this entire disaster? Well, I, I sure want to keep going, I don't know. The story after all. The treasure! Uh, could you take me to the first? I heard you the first time! Hey. It's just... You don't even know if this thing is real, but you've dropped everything to go look for it. And now you're asking me, someone you've just met out in the middle of the desert, to take you to it. Yeah, there's nothing crazy about that. Even though you don't know if it's real and you've just had your car stolen. Yeah, what of it? Did I catch all that? Uh-huh. Yep, you did. Shameless. I'm at a loss for words. How do you have re respond to that? Just tell her, yeah, I'll go along with your crazy idea. Why not? I got nothing better to do. I try to recollect my thoughts, but one word comes to mind. Why? Marina shrugs. Nothing more than that. She just shrugs. I take a look at her. A good look. Her, where, her wavy hair has been dried out by the hot desert air. Her face is red and drenched in sweat. Probably close to melting off her makeup. Even her nice clothes are a little ruffled. But despite all that, this cute peppy girl wants to keep pressing on. Even when most people would have just called it quits after the car broke down. Even out here, all by herself. Yeah. For all I know, she could be some weirdo out to mug me, and this is all some elaborate scheme. I mean, that's pretty elaborate for a scheme. But she wants my help. My help! 
It's been a while since anyone has needed that. It's like an honor. Do I deserve that? No. No, I don't deserve anything. Probably not. Yeah. But she's still asking. Why should I say no? I don't have been I don't have to be in California for another few weeks. And is not that why I'm taking this tree? Th this trip to see the sights for him? Yeah. She was a little acceptable and even more naive. But maybe I need a little bit of that. It's a lot better than just being out here by myself with nothing but the ghost of my memory to keep my company. Now I have this great hallucination that the desert gave me to keep me company. Oh, I mean, oh yeah, totally the real girl. That's you. <laughs> Even if it's just for a little while. <sighs> Why the hell not? Hop in. Oh, she's smiling now. For real? Yes. Yeah, for real. But only until the first location. After that. Oh my god. They're coming close. The bread is forced out of me by the sharp impact of Marina tackling my stomach. A warm but damp sensation wraps itself tightly around me as a dead weight snuggles up against my sh chest. Did you just call her a dead weight? That's so mean, Amber. So thank mean. you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! <sighs> what, what are you doing? Hugging you, silly. I'm hugging you, silly! Oh, what? I guessed her line. My cheeks grew warmer with each passing second. I tried to wiggle my way out, but she stayed latched on, her grip getting tighter and tighter. Marina, please! You're all sweaty! Uh, sorry, I'm just super happy. She's going like so far. So awkward. She unleshes herself. Letting me clear my throat and recollect myself. Anyway, let's get inside. I'm burning up out here. We clamber back inside the motor home, leaving the dry hellishness behind. I turn the ignition and let the AC blast away the RV stuffiness. I let out a breath of sweet relief. Marina and I collapse back into her seat. Alright, so where's the first piece of the treasure? Um, well... You have no idea, do you? <coughs> well, you'll find it with the map. That's not true! The news said a part of it was somewhere here in New Mexico! Yeah, Probably. Th th that's very, like... The whole state is, like, super narrow. I am not surprised at all. Should have seen this coming. You have the journal? Yes, do you? Yeah? She hands the cheap paper back book to me. The cover feels like it could fall apart at the turn of a page. Oh. The music changed again. The whole thing is fitting of its rustic design. I slide my thumb across the edges and flip through the pages, dig forward at passages commenting on the journal's historical significance skip past my eyes most long enough to be their own book. Finally, a photocopied, a photocopied picture of one of the original entries appears, preserving the faded cursive lettering. The entire thing is printed on the next page over. Rusting brown stairs and wrinkles engrave the photo. Some of the writing has been scratched out too, like someone made mistakes and couldn't erase them. Oh, sorry. I had to admit it, but for something that's probably a sham, the thing looks pretty authentic. With the bounty and satisfaction in the end, I am now um, homeward bound. The perilous journey forthcoming to my unrelevant, unrivaled intellect 
and unmatched ambition, I have succeeded in accomplishing what many would believe no longer proved profitable. Of course, this only comes as a surprise to those around me, not myself, because I'm great. I had traveled this way on the trail with many others from the mystery territory, but as typical characteristic statistics grew, I could sense the envious stares among my so-called peers. The gen danger eventually became so great that I wished to flee, but my companions left before I work. For one reason, you may ask, I do not know. It is with this in mind that I have taken it upon myself to leave a note for one of my fellow prospectors and to borrow his teeth so that I may one day return to settle with my family. But this journey... Oh, what? Oh, come on. Come on. Yeah, I'm not reading all this crap. Where should I actually start? Let's see. He left California, lived in Missouri, and supposedly hid something in New Mexico, like Marina said. Then what we're looking for is likely a letter entry. Ah, here we are. At last, I have reached the final point of division in my travels. During my stay among the ruined sanctuary, the Rome native Lamaski informed me of a landmark that was rich in the meadows of his people. Considered sacred, he said that the chance of the gold being discovered would be very slim. He referred to it as a ring rock, a monument erected towards the sky. After my previous detour, I finally arrived! It is which much disbelief, I must say. My friend Lamassi was right. It is not just a monument erected towards the sky. It is a bond pen. Almost as if the Lord himself has struck up the earth among the sand. It is guarded by trails of rocks around it, all branching from the mother rock. On this journey, I have encountered many different sights, danger, and yes, even an occasional friends. As I look upon the mountain before me, I am reminded once more that they are things bigger and greater than I am. Although I am not yet rid of this cough, <coughs> my soul has been humbled and removed that fatigue. I had been think of no better place to store the last of my gold, and I actually await the day I return. What does it say? Yeah. The gist of it is that it's near a big rock and a bunch of little rocks. That should narrow it down, right? Sure. Yeah, to the entire state of New Mexico. Marina gasped and lunges towards the journal, the muscles in her neck tensed and eyes wide with panic. That can't be the only thing he mentioned! There has to be more! I raised a journal eye above me so she can't reach it, using my hands as a blockade against her head as she tried desperately to grasp for it. Sheesh, relax for a second. I actually have a pretty good idea of where it might be. She settles down, still stiff with anxiety, nibbling on the tip of her tongue. I lower the book back down and read over the entry one more time, just to make sure. There's a part where he calls it a winged rock. Assuming my years of reading travel guides and brochures weren't totally useless, then I'm pretty sure that's a loose translation of what the Navajo used to call ship rock. There's a ship out in the desert? Whoa! It's a... No. No. I peer over the journal. Marina's imagination is going bonkers. Her eyes alight as she tries to wrap her head around such a novelty even existing. Yeah, you know, back in the olden days, the ocean was all over the globe. And 
there was a boat, and the boat drifted into the sand, and, and the water was gone. Yeah, that, that totally works. How long have you lived in New Mexico? Marina swells up with pride, only to deflate like a balloon before speaking, instead choosing to blow a misplaced thread of her air out of the way. Oh my life. I sighed and slammed the journal shut. It's a small mountain near the border of New Mexico and Utah that's vaguely shaped like a ship. Oh my god. Oh, okay. That makes way more sense. No, it doesn't. I'm surprised you haven't heard of it. Things a landmark. Yeah. But hey, at least I know now. She doesn't go out much. Shrugging. But maybe it's for the better. <laughs> she, if she didn't go out much. Getting lost at all. Shrugging, I put the journal in smirk. Misplaced as it might be. Her cheeriness is a good mix up from the norm. Do you think the treasure might be there? Maybe. Don't know, but it's worth a shot. We don't have anything else to go on. Like literally nothing. Sure you don't want me to just take you home? Is this the flirty line? She looks like in a flirty pose. You wanna go to my place or your place? Yes. Take you home. Fully what she means. Marina hesitates for a moment, turning the windshield as if to dodge the question with her eyes. No, I think I want to do this. Alright then. Let's do it. I put the car in drive and look ahead. The sun has set, the blue shades of dusk rising up to take its place. I press down on the gas. Marina turns to me and smiles. Let's hit the road. Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more, no more, no more. The sun has long since set and given way to darkness. Only my headlights remain, illuminating, illuminating the road and silhouetting the small rock formations around us. I've been alternating between old tapes and new ones, immediately, immediately throwing on the old tape after finishing a new one and vice versa. I haven't had any complaints from Marina, she's been sitting at my side the entire time, softly humming off-key to the music. Yeah, off-key humming, that's the best kind of humming. <laughs> That's totally how, how she sounds. Maybe. She seems to be the type to just accept things as they are. Like, with her car being stolen or that treasure. Yeah, she has no cars now. Live in the present, Ember! Especially that treasure. I mean, there's a one in a million chance that there is actually a treasure. I mean, it's worth it. You don't have any money. And to make it worse, it's not just hers. Apparently, it's some fen fen no man on now. Goes to show how much I keep up with current event. Yeah, you don't have a cell phone, that's why. But the whole thing seems smells like a scam. I bet somewhere all the big shop from that publishing house are gathered up in their corporate lot. Power, laughing at the ideas, they're totally ripped up in that book. I mean, that, that's a great, that's a great selling thing. Yeah, go on a treasure hunt. I don't know. Even if there's no treasure, it's still a good experience. The treasure is the friends you make along the way. Or something. Dot dot dot. Christ. Even it. I'm even starting to sound like him. I mean, you're not sounding, you're just thinking. Is there sound when you think? I don't know. Only when I'm speaking out loud, I guess. The music turns to sta static before the cassette is silenced by a loud click. 
I ejected and reached for his old tape again. Marina notices, taking the opportunity to break the long held silence. So, do you like music a lot? No, I'm just playing music because there's nothing better to do. Like, listening to you? That would be boring. Oh, um, yeah, I guess. I figured. You've been playing those tapes this entire time. Yes. Have you ever heard of podcasts? They're pretty good. Oh, yeah, you don't have a cell phone, so... Yeah, might be complicated. She picks up one of the tape on the center of the console and inspects it, going as far as to poke her pinky through one of the holes. Though, I'm not sure what you call this type of music. <coughs> good music? Yeah, I've just been playing whatever. Mostly jazz fusion and alt country. There ain't some new age crap in there for good measure. <laughs> Most of these are mixtapes I made when I was little. Cool! Any names I'd recognize? <laughs> I don't know. What music do you listen to usually? She peeks at me through the holes of the cassette, wearing a white, genuine smile. Yeah, I would like it if they drew that. That's a great image. Probably not. Aw, come on. Try me! Yeah, try her. Uh, why not? Maybe I'm not giving her enough credit. You know, Gabriel, Gertu, Weather Report, Donovan, Metheny. Oh, I don't know of those, sorry. Marina gives us sage like nod and grunts of understanding as I lift up a list of the names. You have no idea who any of them are, do you? No. Can you tell me? Not a clue! That's what I thought. Sorry, I usually listen to whatever's on the radio. Yes. Ugh, I'm sick. Have to edit this out, maybe? I crack a slight smile. It's alright. I could see how it might be hard to get into. My gramps used to call it road trip music. Road trip music. I still think it's nice, though. It's making you really happy. <coughs> oh, God. You think so? She taps her finger gently against my cheek. I pull away a little, but let her do it anyway. Ooh, so romantic. Yeah, why else would you be smiling? Because the music is good. Uh, I never really thought of whether it made me happy before, but I do not know it made it happy, so that's good enough for me. That's actually why I'm going to California. You know, for a music festival. <coughs> oh. For real? Where? <laughs> In California. Duh. Not far from Palm Springs. Palm Springs? Like the actual Palm Springs? I don't know where that is. Don't know if there are any other Palm Springs in California. But yeah, they do it every year for a few weekends. I went to my first concert a little before I graduated. She rests her and against the window and stares at the road ahead, a smile fading but still there. It was so much fun. An entire weekend of that sounds super awesome. Nah, it ain't that cool. Mary Neff flings her head away from the window and turns to me. Now she's staring at me like I'm crazy. How could you even say that? It's the coolest thing ever! I wouldn't even be able to wait. I'd want to see all the bands. Yes. All the bands. Sheesh, relax. It's not like I'm taking it for granted. It's just that there's only one group I know I want to see so far. That's right. His favorite group. Just one? Yep, just one. 
He was so excited when he got the tickets. Just one that I'm excited for. I'll watch a bunch though. Yeah, you better. Rehearsing, releasing a long sigh. <sighs> Marina eases back into her seat. Oh good, I was afraid you were going to head home after you saw your group. You crazy? I'd like to at least have a little fun before worrying about all the expenses I gotta deal with. Oh my god, the reality just sunk in. Expenses? Yeah, you need money to travel. Damn it. Uh, it's nothing. She gasped. You use money? <gasps> money is a thing! <gasps> Are you in debt? Is it college loans? My brother said those aren't fun to deal with at all. Got too comfortable. Should have just kept my trap shut. Or did you just spend too much on your tick? Without warning, I swerve up to the side of the road and onto the rocky sand, cutting Mariana off and nearly giving her a heart attack. Maria shoots me a worried glance, her face still pale. Oh my god! What was that? Are you okay? I pinch the bridge of my nose and elbows on the wheel. Amber? Call an Amber alert. I've been driving all day. I'm a little tired. Where are we? Somewhere. A little outside Albuquerque, so we aren't too far now. We'll sleep here tonight and drive to Shiprock first thing in the morning. Killing the ignition, I climb out of my seat into the living quarters. Mariana, Marina trails behind me. I yank open the bathroom. I yank open the bathroom's Velcro latch cover. Its tight is a folded stack with a blanket, sheet, pillow, and my old gym clothes from school. I scoop them up and toss them to Marina. She scrambles to catch it. Desperately balancing them as they lean, lean out of her arms. Sorry about the clothes. I don't have any actual pajamas. You can sleep on the couch. It folds out into a bed. Oh, okay. Alright then, see you in the morning. With that, I step into the back room and slap the sliding door before collapsing onto the oversized bed. Even in the darkness, I can make out the pictures hanging on the wall. Once upon a time, there were generic centerpiece. Now they're photos. Photos of me. 